Hey everybody, welcome to a special edition of What the Flick. We'll be looking at last night's Mad Men and uh, come back all season. We're going to be doing recaps of every episode as it airs uh, as season six kicks off. I'm Alonzo Duraldi. Joining me today, Gina Grad, Brett Ehrlich, Anna Kasparian, and uh, The Doorway. Thoughts? Mm. Can I, can I jump in here? Shoot. I have to say that I was incredibly confused when I tuned in at 8 o'clock to see some uh, really confusing scene between Don and Megan and these two people. I had no idea what was going on and it seemed really dramatic and I didn't know why. And then the credits rolled because it started at 8.08. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> that I could have done oh, without. Oh, that is terrible because yeah. they do a bunch of back-to-back -back Yeah, and I was like, well, AMC. this is, I, I pulled in. It seems <laughs> like there's so much backstory I'm going to get to. No, it, it, there were the credits. That is so terrible. It that wasn't one cool. Of those things you don't think about. When I hear that it, it's a two hour and eight minute yep. episode, I get very excited at eight yep. extra minutes. You need to do, you need to program your DVR to first run yeah. West Coast is showing of yeah. the East Coast I feed. I had no idea because it was 8.08 to 10.16. So 16. terrible. Because weird, I mean, even, but even still people watching this episode yeah. had a similar feeling because the episode starts with like this very strange scene yes. there where you don't know what's happening. Right, it's kind the of POV slip. shot of the CPR yeah. going right. on. Yeah, and you hear Megan's voice and you're like, oh my God, Don is dying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're gonna go all Tony Soprano on us, and he's gonna be this like downtrodden salesman for a year. And we're not gonna and then, know what's going and on. And then when you come back to that scene later, there's that weird thing where they've just come back from Florida, but then they cut back to the the heart attack, and you have to look at what they're wearing to realize, oh, this is a different day. Yeah. This is a flashback because they don't yeah. edit it in any way that lets you know that we're jumping back and forth in time. So. I was like, oh, please don't like Bobby Ewing us. I was like, was that all a dream? I didn't know. <laughs> I, I really didn't know. I had to ask the person sitting next to me, do you think this is a dream? No. I, 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 I baduked back a couple of times on TV. I go, oh, wait, no, orange coat, and he's right. not the. Oh, uh, uh, okay, wait, which no, one yeah. is this? Is this when, like, after the guy. They, they, come, back, they come back from Hawaii, they say hi to the doorman, uh -huh. and then suddenly the doorman has a heart attack, yeah. and yeah. they're dressed We're differently, and you're right. like, whoa, whoa, you know. That was very weird. Yeah, but though. it was great. I mean, it's the kind of thing the show will do sometimes. Yeah, you it know. keeps it exciting, and you're curious what's going to happen later in the episode. Is, are they going to explain it? And then they did explain yeah. it. And right. it takes you a while to figure out what happened. You're absolutely right about that. And, and, and it's a, a fitting kind of way to start things off because this is the deathiest episode ever yeah, maybe. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. It's so, hours of death. so deathy. Uh, but really great. I mean you have Sterling's mother dies, you have the, the, the heart attack and, and, and Don's friendship with the new character, Dr. Rosen, who's a, mm -hmm. uh, a cardiologist. Do we know he's a cardiologist? Like Do they establish what he is? Yeah, they say, well, he's a surgeon of some to. sort, you yeah. know, yeah. that lives in the, in the building. Um, and then RIP the shoe shine man. Uh, yeah, exactly. Oh, poor yes. guy. Like, that's what Sterling was really concerned about, right? Well, or that <laughs> was well, that was, that was the straw, you yeah. know, I yeah. think, for, for him. Yeah, so yeah, like, we should talk about that. So Sterling's mother dies. Uh, you know, he has several sessions with his analyst where he says, oh, I, I don't feel anything, it's not affecting me. And he has this, this big funeral where he winds up sort of blowing his top over the fact that his first wife shows up with her new husband. Uh, and he has the very telling line when he kicks everybody out, this is my funeral. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but then it's not until he finds out that his beloved building, the, the, the building shoeshine man is dead, that that's what finally sort of sends him into, the, into actual, you know, grief and, and convulsions. Yeah, I mean, he is going through a lot. He just went through a divorce, right? right? His mom di dies the shoeshine guy dies right. and it seems like he's really good at you know uh suppressing any type of emotion or, or feeling that or he has it kind of it. or drinking through it exactly <laughs> I love that his secretary was more emotional about his mother dying than he was <laughs> right he had to console her yeah. as he just found out about this pretty tragic news about his mother and it was also I think it speaks to how he defines his relationships because he says he you know he didn't feel that close to his mother and and his ex-wife says well you know you could spend more time with your daughter and he's like Ugh, I can't I can't get it well then he <laughs> has that interaction then, with his daughter where he gives her the water from the river Jordan yeah, with which she, she was baptized yeah. and it's all about something else and he leaves that token of family relationship yeah. behind and that one thing that was supposed to mean anything to them nothing. and that's that's paralleling she, his relationship where his, with his mother where she dies and it, it's all about him. Yeah, yeah she, she leaves it on the table to go, because really the conversation's about money. She's yeah. trying to get money out of him for this business venture of her husband's. And yeah, she just- Refrigeration! Exactly. The wave of the future! She just, she just dumps that jar on the table without a thought. It actually reminded me, I don't know if y'all saw a movie a couple years ago called Summer Hours, this great French film about, um, basically it's this family where the, the, mud, the matriarch has assembled this house full of amazing art and, and all these, you know, uh, uh, sculpture and all these great cultural pieces. And the subsequent generations 
students don't really give a shit. And she dies, and it's sort of like they're more interested in the house and the money and their own sort of petty concerns. So yeah, that sort of idea of generational things and, and stuff getting lost along the way. Obviously, I think the 60s themselves, you can tell, are coming to an end uh, as this show starts. Yeah. When we were watching it, uh, uh, Dave at some point said, ah, this is when people started looking like shits. It's amazing. <laughs> and there was that one scene where Roger's like lying down in analysis, and I'm like, did he lose the hair on half his head? And the answer is no. He just has the biggest Parted, Bob's yeah. big boy swoop yeah. coming up to the side. And, and, what, and a very and what dandy outfit. Just oh, awesome. yeah. double-breasted Everyone's blazer. getting that outfit. Crunch. Yeah. And what he lacks on the sides, he's making up for on the sideburns. Yes. Oh, yes. even Pete Campbell oh, getting oh, the sideburns. And, and don't you yeah. feel, I, is, I, I, I hope this isn't true, but I. I really felt like with this new era coming in and this new style and this new everything, it's losing some of its magic. Well, like Don's it's not. 50s magic. But Don's not. You that's look at true. everyone. Everyone, no, that's who's, true. everyone who's trying to, to fit in with that with, class. Yeah. I mean, Don is the and only person I'm who hasn't changed. Joan, 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 actually, yeah, I think yeah. is still. Her hair was darker. I used to love her strawberry blonde. She's darker now. <laughs> well, she's getting older. She's, you know, probably, you know, hitting the bottle oh, for now. Yeah, you right, know. Right, yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, you're right. I think the older characters that are, that are obviously more comfortable with themselves and, and more established in the look, are you gonna stick with that look? But then you've got like Harry Crane with the oh, with amazing. the big glasses yeah. and the, the the hipster, you know, like the the the, the Botany Five Hundred <laughs> outfits going the on. Snap on hair. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> the, I, no, I was just saying. Sorry. The, uh, before we before we lose Roger, the what the other interesting thing I thought about him this episode was um, his use of uh, talking about doors uh, and going mm -hmm. through doors and life being a succession of that. He is the only main character on the show who has dropped acid and. One of the sort of key texts for LSD users has been Aldous Huxley's The Doors of Perception, uh -huh. uh, which is where the band, The Doors, got their name, actually. So I, I just thought that was an interesting kind of callback to where he is and, 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 and to use that. And, and obviously that's a metaphor that establishes through the whole show. I mean, there are tons of doorways in this episode that, yeah. that count, whether it's you know Betty tearing her coat in the village or you know countless other ones. And by yeah. the way, speaking of the village, um, they're really throwing in like, look, we're squatters, we're in the 60s. We quote stranger in a strange land. Like, look, lady, if you can't grok this, it's really not our problem. But that was actually a common usage thing in the late 60s. Was it? Yeah, grok was like to dig something, you know, to, yeah, to, to be. To really a, understand but, it. But, you know, but as, as Matt Seitz pointed out in The Vulture, I mean, Betty is a stranger in a strange oh, land in yeah, that scene. Always. So um, let's about, talk about well, no, yeah, it. The, the, the scene that kind of left a lot of questions in my head was when uh, Betty was talking to her husband about, or joking around with her husband about raping the you know prodigy the you the know -year -old. yeah the 15 year old yeah I, yeah I I don't know if that was foreshadowing something or if she's just straight out crazy that's like what that's not something you joke there, around about right it was a while when Mad Men had the perfect actress in January Jones yes. and that actress was the childlike doll who is, has, is very simple and delivers simple lines very yeah. simply and now there is a little more demand on that character there, it just felt so weird. I didn't believe that scene. Yes, and, I you agree. Know, I see better act. Like I feel like the uh, I see better acting happening elsewhere in the yeah, show. Absolutely. I, I, I can't believe you're going to make me come out in defense of January Jones, but <laughs> actually, I thought she was pretty good in this episode. And in that scene in particular, that scene in particular is uncomfortable to watch. But at the same time, I think it approaches a way that couples will sometimes go to the darkest place of, of humor with each other, yeah. uh -huh. knowing that no one else is around and that no one else is gonna hear it. And I think it also sort of is that way of deflecting an actual tension in the marriage mm. and sort of trying to disguise it as humor. Yeah. Yeah. She realizes she's getting older, you know, she's still grappling with her weight. She knows that her husband is probably, you know, like it, it, it's, it, the you know, younger, sexier models right. are turning his eye. And so I think that's her way of addressing that in a ha-ha kind of way, but it falls flat and it's supposed yeah. to fall flat, I think. Mm -hmm. I think I, that, that actually makes perfect sense. I don't hate her as a person and as a character as much. Now, fake fat Betty is what I call her. Cause you can always get. <laughs> but, um, but I think you're right, and, and she was the quintessential model. You know, she was the Coca-Cola girl. She was, you know, she was the beautiful one, and she's not right now. And I mean, it makes it all the worse that she lost a man when she still looked awesome. Yeah. You know, and now she doesn't. What is that going to do? It's all about Ritz crackers and jelly. And she herself defected in yeah. the midst of it.
and who what what does marriage mean anymore? Yeah, what is the, the Ritz cracker and jelly scene was kind of hilarious too. I, I felt like her acting wasn't as good in that scene because her timing was off. Oh, the yeah. the interaction she had with the violin player, the fifteen year old violin yeah. player, was not believable in my opinion. Um, so. I, I, I it, like it, all the interaction with Betty felt a little fake to me. I totally agree. Yeah, but but the, the scene you're talking about when they're sitting, when we were talking about with uh, the rape and sitting in bed, like yeah. I definitely get what the what the writers are doing there, mm -hmm. and I think that that's a well written scene. And but I, you don't think she's I just the execution of it. It was ambiguous, like to me. Like I think I could have gotten more out of it if if I think I think the like guy who plays her husband is as well maybe if the sock <laughs> puppet did else? something with a little more life. I, than got, I got no problem with Betty. I think she's I think she's doing some interesting stuff. I thought the scene with the the the, the girl in the kitchen was good. I thought her her trek to the village was interesting. And I, and I think again the 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 state of the village is part of the show's kind of ongoing cycle of death. If you'll recall, in the first season, when Don goes to the village and has his you know, affair with uh, the hot uh, bohemian mm -hmm. played by uh, 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 Rosemary DeWitt, you know, it was vibrant and, and, and exactly, yeah. and now it's just this sort of squalid thing, and you know, people have abandoned the city for the suburbs, and it's just, you know, yeah. it's yeah. wretched. But I, I did appreciate how cool and calm and collected she was in that environment. I sure. mean, that's the ultimate fish out of water. And I thought they were gonna say, you know, like, look scared, like, look terrified. But she was just like, well, okay, you know, I, I did this when I was young, I can do it again. She's got Sally at home, nothing scares her at this point. Yeah, <laughs> what's going on with Sally, Sally, by the way? Sally, she's, she's a, a little teenager. Sally. She's like 14 now, I so, know. you know, that's, Sally. Yeah, that's totally what she would be doing. I, I, I feel a little bad for Betty, especially when uh, she gets all sassy with her mother, but I, I, I love it because I think that's one of the realistic aspects of yeah. the show. You're 14, you're going through all these changes, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, hormonally and everything, and you just, you know, you give your mom a hard time. And, and I, I think, think that, it, I think it's realistic in the way that you know, you're wondering why Betty doesn't get completely ruined by this, but I think parents develop a thicker skin because it develops over time when the yeah, like kid I'll turns say, into well, a what do you think of my hair? I hate it, you're ugly! By the way, Bobby okay. made the cut. This Bobby made the cut to another yeah, season. Yeah. They've switched Bobbies, I think, 15 times yeah, now. Yeah, new Bobby, yeah. And they like cute little new, yeah. like, new Bobby. But I, I think, and I think poor little Sally, man, she's just gotten, like, the short end of the stick, I think, forever. So for her to have a little rage and a little, like, Piss and vinegar in her. I think she's she's well within her right. Yeah, I totally a, agree. She's an early a child of divorce, you know. Mm -hmm. So she was she's really blazing a trail for 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 sass mouths to come. You mm -hmm. know? Uh, so we have that we haven't really talked about this scene at the beginning, um, where he runs into a Vietnam soldier. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. And for me, I felt like I was waiting to see that scene in a flashback. But all we get is this token of that night that went right. over. And, um, and, and so what, how, what did you guys think? What do you think happened in that night? Do you think we'll see it? I think that setting up some larger issues regarding Don and his identity, you know, the lighter is very key. The Don Draper lighter is mm -hmm. one of the few souvenirs he has from the real Don Draper, you know, from the war. And so that he either swapped it with this guy or just wound up with this guy's lighter. I think it's this kind of, it's a totem of the fake life that he's yeah. living mm -hmm. and the fact that he tries to throw it out and it comes back. That's yeah. exactly you know? what I was thinking. <laughs> I think it's definitely, <laughs> you know. Throw it off the boat and yeah. it comes to the other yeah. side of the boat. But it's such, a, it's such a perfect parallel for his own life. He right. can't shake who he really is. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. that's true. And I think that this uh, episode or the season premiere was very symbolic in the way that Don really feels about love, right? Mm. He's very skeptical about love. Right. Remember that ad he was looking at with the happy couple right, in the middle the of the kitchen cleaner? Yeah. Exactly, and he, he just seems very skeptical of yeah. like this romanticized notion of love. And I'm wondering if he's truly skeptical or if it's a way of justifying and rationalizing some of the behavior that you see later on in the episode right. where he cheats on his so wife. So one of Don's great capabilities is to understand the universal experience of something. Right. But now his experience is his personal is infringing is impinging upon that. And what to other people he thought would ring true in that one ad that he presents where the guy's throwing his clothes down and right, and right. running away. And he he really thinks that this is this is an aha, he's had an aha moment. Yeah. Has he gone so far that we can't get him back? 
Right. That, that ad definitely seems to be screaming something about what's going on in his head. Because, yeah, it totally says yeah. suicide, I think, to anybody who looks at it. And the fact that the first time we see him in the episode, he's reading Dante's Inferno, yeah. you know, while in paradise. Yeah. You know, which they call it paradise several times, Hawaii. Which, which you know. now we just know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, there is no situation in which Don Draper can relax. <laughs> yeah. None. I know. He's got the coconut oil on him, he's got the hot chick, he's got the, you know, the, the drinks and the thing, and he's still... <laughs> like well, stiff as a board, yeah. Al Gore, like the whole like animatronic. He can't help himself. He's Don Draper. Have you guys seen the poster art for this season? Yes, where so he's the, looking over his yeah, shoulder and at, himself. Another, at himself. Yeah. What do right. we what do we take from that? And does, did that present in this episode the way you thought it might? Mm. Because he's walking away from himself. There's a dawn in light colors walking right. this way and a dawn in dark colors going that way. I feel like that's, I, I've just been treating that more like a foreshadow for what's going to unravel. I didn't really get a sense of that in this episode. So I think, I, my, my perception, and I just thought about this, mm -hmm. is, um, is that in this episode, we go through so much seeing one dawn. And it might be, you know, there's some, there's elements of how depressed and sad he is, but he and Megan's relationship seems to be fine. Sure, And picking yeah. up right where it did last season, where we're watching, you know, they do fight, but they talk through it. Right. And maybe they have they have sex through it. And oh, they, they, didn't through. That, they didn't have that cliffhanger, you know, was like, is he going to cheat on her or and not? And so we're worried right. about and that so the whole that's time. Hanging and then, over it, then yeah. we have seen this whole episode play out mm. where at the end of it, we find out there was a, another Don Draper happening this yeah. whole time. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I and think that's the dark one walking away. And I also oh, don't yeah. think their relationship. So that they break? I don't think their relationship is fine at all. I think it looks good on, on its face. But when you really like delve into it, you can see Megan kind of turning into her own person, which mm. is something that she desperately wanted. Like her career is finally starting to become somewhat successful. You know, they're at the vacation and she kind of wants to be footloose and fancy free. Right. She's like pulling out the joints and she's like, hey, let's get high, honey. And he He's like, you know, as you mentioned, very like uptight. Yeah. Like, I don't know if I want to do this. It's weed <laughs> uptight. It's unbelievable. <laughs> I, know. I know. So I feel like she's kind of coming to uh, a point where she wants to be free. She yeah. wants to let loose. Little does she know that she, her husband's no. already been doing that. Way ahead of you. Yeah, right. yeah. Well, and, and he, you know, at the end of last season, expresses his fear to uh, to Peggy, you right. know, that that, yeah. that you nurture someone, they get they they come along in life and then they leave you. Yeah. You know, so I yeah. think he's already preparing for that. As to the two dons on the in, on the poster, maybe it's that this is the season where he ditches Don Draper the way he ditched Dick Whitman, yeah. you know. Mm. Maybe this is the year where he goes on to the next identity, who well, knows? I couldn't help, I, I through watching Mad Men the past few seasons and especially the one yesterday, I couldn't help finding parallels between Don Draper and Dexter. And I think about this more than I should, because they both, in order to survive, need to put on of, uh, they need to choose their battle battles, they need to put on a very stiff, very society, you know, will appreciate this mask. And I feel so sorry for them. I mean, like one, you know, slays the, and one slays the, hmm. But like they both, they both need to have that mask or they can't survive. Right. And I but feel so sorry for Don because of that. Well, the thing is, though, so the, his bad behavior is far, it, it, Don's bad behavior is far more widely sanctioned by America at his time. <laughs> For so, sure. In, so basically, everyone's a serial killer in Mad Men. Oh, absolutely. They all <laughs> For a different Umar. reason. They have different codes that they live by. Absolutely. Well, and you know, it's very telling that one of the most upset looks we see on Don's face is when the photographer tells him, be yourself. Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And that's great. <laughs> and who is that? And yeah. I was like, shut up, photographer, you're getting it. <laughs> Get out of your own way. <laughs> just got instantly caught and thought. Played by Michael Bunin from uh, My Boys, by the way. Very nice little. And I was very excited him. to see Linda Cardellini yes. turning up as, as Don's latest conquest, which yeah. is great. Like the adulteresses on the show now are all like the stars of my favorite shows of yesteryear. Yeah. Oh. We just we just had we had Rory, Rory. Gilmore last year, yeah, yeah. Alexis Bledel, yeah, and now we've got uh, uh, I, forget, I forget yeah. the character name, but yeah. And, and it was so obvious at the end of that 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 was not the first time. I mean, how oh, could clearly, you know? Yeah. And when and what did you guys think of when she said, you know, what do you want for the new year? And he said to stop doing this. Right. I thought as a woman, if I was the one asking, and that's what he said, I would I would burst into tears. But she was like, yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah. Well, cool. she, she knows that do. what she's doing is wrong too. I yeah. mean, she's married to the yeah. cardiologist but or whatever. Here's the, here's the difference. Whenever I see an actress, and this is not fair to a show, but whenever I see an actress I know doing kind of like that part that may have happened a million times, right. I think to myself, 
you know what, maybe they're gonna do more with this. Mm -hmm. And maybe she has just a, a dark past as he does. Maybe she's on her third go around. Right. And yeah, it, maybe it, they're it, gonna it, find it, something in each other. It is a yeah. tell that this episode, this, this character's coming back, you know, yeah. we, we didn't right. just sign her for this yep. 10 minutes, you know, yeah. so. Hey, can, I, can I just ask something really quick? So, I'm not married, but is that what marriage is like? Where like your husband leaves for a few hours to bang someone? Yeah, and to go get like, he comes, and Yeah, yeah, he comes back. back. She was asleep, I think is what they did. They're like, she fell asleep when he wasn't there. But you still realize, like, oh, damn, my husband's been gone for quite a while. I guess that was just what would happen during that uh, period of time. We were talking about that last night, too. And, but I think maybe when you're married to Don Draper, you just, there, is, there is very much just, like, an acceptance, like, a willful, what is it, acceptance of disbelief. You're just yeah, like, just, yeah, that's yeah. what Don does. Yeah. You can't really yeah, argue for with sure. that. It's like kind of dating someone who's, like, in the NBA, where you're just like... You're like, you know what, mm. it's just a road trip. What could possibly go wrong? Yeah. <laughs> or something's going to happen, but it's nice. I do have a very nice bed, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's New Year's Day, 1968. Right. You know, and we have fondue. All is right with the world. Yeah, seventy-five thousand dollar New York apartment. Yes. And that's actually that's my other question. The, the the cardiologist and Don and Megan live in the same building, right? right? Yes. So why did one hallway look so shitty and the other one look so beautiful? Yeah, huh. I'm still trying to figure out where they shot, like what's going on in that I, building, I wasn't, the, yeah, the geography of it. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure. Maybe there's a kitchen entrance or. Well, Don and Megan do live uh, of a few floors above the cardiologist right. and his wife, so maybe that's why. Yeah. Well, you know, Peggy uh, has, has her Plucky issue with Peggy. Plucky Peggy with her with the ears issue, uh, which, you know, it's interesting because uh, I, I well, I, first I love that the boyfriend has gone full on, you know, Jerry yeah, Rubin with yeah, the Ginsburg, look, you know. Yeah. He's like, um, I haven't landed any other roles in Hollywood lately, so I'm just going to commit to this. <laughs> man, man no wigs, I got this. <laughs> but, but, but I love that. I mean, we've seen the Vietnam War sort of slowly encroaching on the show, Joan's husband, and you know, a lot of different things. But now we're really getting into the 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 the, the quagmire. Mm -hmm. You know, we're getting into the sort of pop culture, you know, that's the war that people saw on television. Right. Uh, and obviously that's, that's, that's got to bleed into the advertising world, you know. So to have it be, and, and apparently that, that was a real thing. I, they've been saying on the web this morning, there was a guy named Milt Kamen who was on uh, The Tonight Show in December of 67 who told the joke about the ears oh. and that's what, you know. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that. But I actually really love that. Any scene with Peggy I find a little boring, mm -hmm. but I what? did. Yeah, I'm not a I big know. Peggy lover. I like Peggy. Uh, I think this whole show is Peggy's arc. Frankly, really? More than it is Don's, yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting like, to you, see you her like character develop. There's sure. a generation of, of, of Don Draper playing forward into the future within the advertising agency, as well as you're seeing, like, he has kids in real life. Well, in the last episode, last season, and, you know, certainly in the season premiere, I feel like, you know, she's the one who's least involved in any kind of drama, like right. sexual sure. drama. It's more about her career, her career. And, like, as a woman who loves to look up to other women that are all about their career, like, I should love it, but I find myself a little bored by it when well, you have Draper. Escape. Yeah, yeah, well, when you have Draper on the side, like, banging other chicks. She's the least miserable of the characters yeah, right now. Yeah, which is probably so why that's... I'm a little bored by it. But I do, I did like that maybe scene. something terrible will happen to her soon and, you'll be <laughs> and then I'll love it and then she'll be like my favorite character yeah maybe um, but I do love that they're finally bringing in the Vietnam War more yeah. because you know the the historical elements of the show really make it great yeah. and a, as soon as they make uh, references to things and I didn't know that that uh, joke was a real one that's yeah. just fascinating well and speaking of that they are they are hitting the uh, don't smoke as hard as they used to with the you know smoking in every right, scene. Right, I mean right. now it's like don't smoke, put that away. Don't smoke, don't smoke. <laughs> now, I mean they are really driving that home. Yeah, yeah, and if that's part that that I think also is sort of part of the death of the '60s, you know. Uh, and I think it'll be interesting to see how they pursue the idea of Peggy as a powerful woman in 1968. Mm -hmm. uh, because that's, I think, a dynamic that, that has a lot to explore. Yeah, so there is a, a lot, of, lot of ways to go in this season, and uh, it's going to unfold some interesting ways, and uh, I hope everybody will come back as we uh, hit it every Monday and talk about what's going on. Thank you guys for coming. Thank Thanks you. For Thank you.